of wisdom excellence today. So praise God, the work of God has so much wisdom in it. And, you know, I was just reflecting on something the other night, and really the Bible teaches us everything that we need to know in life, all the big stuff. You know, like, the Bible may not teach us, like, how to, like, sweep a floor, but the Bible teaches us to have wisdom and knowledge, so we can watch someone sweep the floor and learn how to do it. But really, the Bible teaches us how to be saved, first and foremost, right? That's through the gospel of Jesus Christ that died on the cross and rose again for the forgiveness of our sins and everlasting life forever. That's the biggest thing ever, right? The Bible teaches us how to prosper and be fruitful with things. The Bible teaches us how to have a successful marriage. And the Bible teaches us how to love. And really, that's how, those are the, the biggest things in life that we can do. And the rest is just like minutia, like little details. And we're worth taking care of the big stuff and putting God first. So I'm going to be in Proverbs chapter 25. If anyone like to follow along, it's going to be really easy to follow along. I'll be using uh, mostly King James Version, but cross-referencing with the New Living Translation and sometimes the NIV Version as well, too. So praise the Lord. I'm in, so Proverbs chapter 25, verse 14. It says, a person, now when I go through this, I'm like looking for like the big points that speak to the congregation and what I believe is appropriate for all of us or any one of us, praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 14. I'm starting with Proverbs chapter 25. Verse 14 says, A person who promises a gift but doesn't give it is like clouds and wind that brings no rain. Praise the Lord. When I read that, I was like, wow, that just further reinforces how we should be men and women of integrity. Like, when you say that you're going to give something, give it. You don't want to say, like, oh, I'm going to get you, like, a stereo and we, to look good in the moment, but never actually deliver on it. You know what I mean? It's just like a useless, it's like a useless lie, like I say. There's not even a point to it. Like, there's no benefit to it. Like, so, we always really want to be of the highest integrity and caliber as men and women and children, really children of God in everything that we do, whether it is in ministry, the workplace, or you're helping out with something going on with your city or your country or whatever it is. But remember that. Don't just promise like a gift and not, and, so, and, and reflect to on all the things that, okay, now, I, and, and me, myself, like, okay, I told my, I took a picture of my friend's baby and him, I'm like, I'm going to frame it and give it to you, but it's been a few weeks, and I need to get on that. I need to get the picture. I need to buy the frame. I need to put the picture in the frame, and I need to deliver that to him. A person who promises a gift but doesn't give it is like clouds and wind that brings no rain. You know, we're in Phoenix. It's dry out, and we're always wanting rain. We see the clouds, and we're like, oh, thank God. We're going to get some rain. It's going to nourish the crops, the orange trees, whatever. But it doesn't come. We're like, oh, man, it's a bummer, right? So praise the Lord. Moving on to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 17 says, Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary and there so hate thee. Praise the Lord. So what does that mean? Withdraw thy foot from your neighbor's house, lest he be weary. It's, it's tired of you. And so we hate you. I remember years back, I was staying at an old friend's house, just you know, hanging out. And uh, I had just, I think I just finished working at a job. I think I, uh, I think I got laid off or something like that. They got acquired. And I, I, I had stayed one night. I think I stayed two nights. And, and I could tell, I was like, you started getting weary of me. I was like, oh, this is, and I remember that Bible verse. I was like, this is what that is. I'm overstaying my welcome. Some other translations, I believe, say, don't overstay your welcome in someone's house because they can become weary. And so, hey, we don't want to do that. So we want to we want to remember that when someone gracious us, like a place to stay or a couch, you know, sometimes you fall on hard times, you got to stay on someone's couch or whatnot. We don't want to overstay our welcome. Um, and 
So wisdom that I may add as well, too, is that contribute in any way you can as well, too. Like I've had, I remember in, when I was living in Texas, I had multiple people stay with me just because that's, I think, there's the Christian heart. We sometimes want to do that. Right. And I think that can be okay if we have that margin in our life that, that it's acceptable. we got a wife and kids that may be different. We may not have that extra margin to accommodate that. And, um, you know, I remember I let them stay even like rent free and oftentimes not doing anything, just making a mess, not like, cleaning up the dishes or cleaning the bathroom or anything like that. I'm like, man, like, you know, you could at least contribute something. So remember that if you're, if someone raises you, contribute in any way you can, you know, clean up after your mess, clean your bathroom, clean your dishes, vacuum up. Don't, we don't want to be lazy, but certainly not as children of God, right? We want to be of the utmost character and integrity. And with that, if someone else wants to contribute in different ways, and isn't it a blessing to be able to contribute as well, too? Whether it's monetarily or through labor, praise the Lord, remember, make sure to contribute. And with your families as well, too. Maybe you're contributing some of the rent, you know, but make sure you're contributing in other ways. Clean up after yourself. Remember that. Proverbs chapter 21, verses 21, Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 through 22, says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. That's so like, I believe the word is antithetical to kind of modern day world's conventional wisdom. It's like, well, if you got an enemy, like, you know, try to knock him out, right? It's like, give him a kidney shot or something, knock your enemy out, right? But the Bible actually tells us if we have an enemy and he's hungry, give him food to eat. And if he's thirsty, give him water. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. And it's like, you're doing good, the Lord's going to reward you, and he's your enemy, you're doing good to him, even though he needs the food, needs the water, he's, he's going to be like, oh man, he's, he's going to be riled up, you know? It's like, how can this guy be so gracious to me? I hate him. You know what I mean? That's the enemy's point of view. But that's what God calls us to be, to bless our enemies. To actually give food and water to our enemies. Even though we're doing a good thing, literally, to them, it might, you know, irk them. But that's for him, them and the Lord to work out, really. Because we're doing good, we're doing our part. Praise the Lord. And it's so wonderful. I was watching, uh, a little aside to this, I was watching this uh, YouTube channel of uh, kind of like a short documentary of this ministry and Kensington, Pennsylvania. It's off the art outskirts of Philadelphia. It's like an open air drug market. It's just like fentanyl junkies all over the streets. They're all just like passed out on the streets over and over again. You walk a few blocks and just see dozens of people. And this pastor's out there and he's got a, a street ministry and he's got a place where he can get the kids off the street, get them trained up in the ways of the Lord, get them trained in sports and activities. And he's saying, he's like, you know, I've been here for 20 years doing this. How can I, how, how can I not be callous to, this is like a heart, like callous over the heart. So what's going on? So the reason for that is Jesus. So after 20 years of seeing junkies over and over again on the streets, why I'm not callous to it? It's because of Jesus. I still actually have a heart. It still actually impacts me. But that's what we see today. Today's modern world, right? Because there's homelessness and the fentanyl epidemic is everywhere in all the major cities. And most people are just callous to it. They're just like, oh, whatever. You know? If someone could be dying on the street, just walk past them. No effect on their heart, their mind, their actions. But we don't want to be callous to that. We don't want to be callous to that. And that's part of Jesus giving us a new heart. And I know some people here have a little heart for the homeless and have a little heart. But I want you to use wisdom and knowledge, too, because you going in by yourself, if you're tempted by that, 
environment, they can easily pull you down. So that's why the Bible tells us to go out by two. So you got your brother, accountability. You got to watch each other. The Bible says a faith of three is not easily broken. So you keep situational awareness. You know what's going on. You go out on a mission with your brother. So the battle happens. You don't go by yourself and just have the enemy knock you out. You know? So praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 24 says, It's better to live alone in the corner of an attic than with a quarrelsome wife in a lovely home. Ooh. So we got a lot of young people in this ministry, generally speaking. And there's a lot of single. You've got to remember that. We're looking for a wife or a husband for the counterpart, female, wives, listening in. It's better to be alone in the corner of an attic. We add a fear upstairs than have a quarrelsome wife in a beautiful home. Lesson. Quarrelsome wife is a big red flag. Man. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 26 says, If the godly give in to the wicked, it's like polluting a fountain or muddying a spring. Ooh. And that's what we're called to be, a clean spring, a clean fountain. And if we give in to the wicked, if we give in to those guys on the streets, the junkies on the streets, the reprobates, it's like muddying the waters of the spring. Do not give in to them. Have a clean fountain. Don't muddy the spring. Proverbs 25, verse 28 says, A man without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. What happens with a city with broken down walls and an army comes in? The city gets obliterated, right? There's no defense. They just come and take, take control. So remember that, saints of God. Self-control. Repeat after me. Self-control. Self-control. In what areas of life? All of them. Repeat after me. All of them. All of them. Right? Self-control. What does that mean? It means we actually have to control our hands and our thoughts and our actions. We can't do the wrong thing. We need to have self-control. Praise the Lord. And I believe that's actually one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. Praise the Lord. Elijah, is it good to have self-control? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11 says, As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. Mm. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Imagine that a dog, it vomits, you know, and it goes back and eats it. It's like, well, it's gross, right? Yeah. So a fool repeats his foolishness. So if we know we've done something foolish, right, that's burned us or harmed us, and we go back and we do that same exact thing, what is that? Foolishness. Foolishness. Right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. We're called to be wise and learn from our mistakes, right? Right. Get wiser and wiser every day. Amen. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 17 says, Interfering in someone else's argument or quarrel, like a fight, is as foolish as yanking a dog's ears. Huh? If you walk up to a dog on the street and you yank its ears, what's it going to do? It's probably going to bite you, right? So it's like if you get involved with someone's argument, say you're on the streets and someone's having some foolish argument, you step in, you start to get, you know, slap happy with them and inner fuel, inner fear. It's like yanking a dog's ears. You don't know what's going to happen. They could bite you. They could shoot you. They could stab you. Stay away from someone else's arguments. Don't get in the middle of it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Wisdom. The Bible gives us so much wisdom in all the areas of our life, right? 
I think I'm so glad that I chose to deep dive into Proverbs the last couple of weeks because it's like we're not getting like in the broader body of Christ, we're not getting enough of it. Like, why is you know what I'm saying? Like, why is there so much? There like a lack of a lack of wisdom. Like, am I, does anyone else love wisdom as much as I do? Praise the Lord. It really the Bible directs us in all of our ways in life. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 18 and 19 says, just as damaging as a madman shooting a deadly weapon is someone who lies to a friend or neighbor and then says, I was only joking. We got we to gotta be careful with our lips. We don't want to be lying to our friends. Better to say nothing than to say a lie. I believe we learned last week earlier in Proverbs that it's better to be poor than be a liar. Better to be poor than to be a liar. We don't want to be a liar. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Don't lie to your friends. I I always say, like, be specific with what you say. Like, it's so easy to, it's way easier and graceful to be specific to what is true than to just make up a lie. God gave us these lips to be discerning. And he gave us a mind and the Holy Spirit to impart wisdom. We don't want to just say things to say them or we, we don't want to say things to hurt people too. And we certainly don't want to be lying to liars, people that habitually lie. I brought this up on the ride over here today with a couple of the brothers. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20 says, A person who strays from home is like a bird that strays from its nest. So it's like you're out from your home for days on days in the city. It's like a bird straying from its nest. It's like anything could happen. You get in trouble. Your wings could get broken. Just remember that. When you're thinking about just wildly going off for days on days, a person who strays from home is like a bird that strays from its nest. You know, some people don't have a nest at home, right? But thank God we have a home, right? Use it. Use it as a place to rest. Use it as a place, as a your home base to build your life out of. So you can get a proper night's rest, have a good productive day the next day, get the work done that needs to be done for your studies, for schooling, for your work, get a job. Don't throw away your nest. Don't throw away your home. Yeah, you might want to have your own place or a bigger place or more extravagant place, but many times, at the end of the day, that could be vanity. At the very least, cherish the home that we got at the moment. Try to be peacemakers, right, with our families. Contribute in the ways that you can. Be wise. Not everyone is going to understand our gifts and our talents and our callings. We very often times do not get the positive reinforcement that we're looking for when we say things. You know, it's like when we're going out and we're doing evangelism and saving souls on the streets, not everybody understands that. In fact, I only I say that only even a small portion of the body of Christ is going to really understand it. And it's like a needle in a haste. And yes, that needle in the haystack will understand that work that was put into doing that, but most people won't. So we have to be really wise with our families. Wise as strangers, too. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 28 says, as workers who tend a fig tree, 
as workers who tend a fig tree are allowed to eat the fruit, so workers who protect their employer's interests will be rewarded. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 18. As workers who tend a fig tree are allowed to eat the fruit, so workers who protect their employer's interest will be rewarded. As children of God, if we're blessed with a job, we should be good stewards of that job, right? Right. We shouldn't steal, right? Right? Right. We should go the extra mile, right? With everything. You know, I... I learned something from someone that I respect <laughs> probably about a couple years ago that I wish I learned early. He said, in the effect of, generally speaking, the job that you get, you often get a benefit of that job. So what does that mean? See, you work in an ice cream shop. Generally speaking, depends on the employer and the specifics of what they say. You're probably going to get some free ice cream, <laughs> right? Right. You know, one of my first jobs, I worked at Subway. Okay. And we got a free sub every day. So remember that if you work at a bank, you might get some extra money. That's good. If you work at a medical facility, you may get free checkups from the doctor or the nurse that's working next to you. Diagnose you on the spot, right? So when we look at where we're going to invest our labor in, and if we have a choice in the matter of it, we ought to use wisdom and choose wisely because the industry that we go into, that there can be an extra benefit to ourselves. But what I personally say is that Look for an industry that's aligned with your gifts and your calling for God. And be a good steward. Go the extra mile. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 19, excuse me, says, As a face is reflected in water, so the heart reflects the real person. Every day we got to look in our hearts. What's going on in our hearts? What do we have to give up and let go of or lay at the altar of Jesus in our heart? It's a continual process. We're all influenced by different things what we put into our eyes, eyes and our ears. And I believe there's a saying in scripture, it's like the devil is like the prince of the airwaves, right? You guys heard that before? Yeah. So what's influencing the airwaves? We turn on our news, you know, music, online, and the various different outlets. There's an agenda, right? It's like everything that the Bible, it's like everything in that agenda is the opposite of what the Bible said. And we see what the state of the world is, right? So what I gotta say is like, you just gotta opt out, like the minimum, you gotta opt out of it. You gotta opt out of the wicked stuff. You got I I try to have an eye and ear, I'll cross rep. If it's wicked, opt out. Just turn it off and get away. If it's some news, you gotta decipher to know what the truth is. It's tough. The truth will set you free. The, the truth will set you free, though. Praise the Lord. I love the truth. But we got to reflect and see what's in our heart, what's going on in our hearts every day. And there are phases in life, too. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. The wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are bold as lions. When we're out on the street, we're bold as lions. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I first saw this when, when a pastor David Street preaching, and the, the wicked would come up and they'd say something, and 
And you say like, okay, you respond to it, and they just run away. And it's like, okay, well, the wicked run away when there's no one chasing them. And they run. And then I see that myself when you go out there too. Sometimes people will just want to run and say something in the mic and then run away because they don't want to hear the counter argument or the truth or what the Bible says, which should be the truth. Right. Right? That's how we ought to be as bold as lions, standing on the word of God. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 2 says, when there is moral rot within a nation, is there moral rot going on in our nation right now? Yeah, right? Its government topples easily. But wise and knowledgeable leaders bring stability. Let us help bring that stability to where we are, where we live, our nation, our land. Let us be wise leaders. Let us not acquiesce to the rest of the world, right? Even if they're the one. Has anybody seen that picture in Nazi Germany where everyone is saluting Hitler and there's one person in the crowd that doesn't? It's a bold picture. It's a powerful picture. Let us be that one person that doesn't that doesn't salute the wickedness, the one person that opts out and says no, what kind of boldness and courage does that take? That really takes a fear of the Lord, right? right. That really takes following Jesus, not just saying I'm a Christian. What does that mean to say I'm a Christian? I have to follow Jesus. I have to actually have faith and courage and conviction, right? I actually have to believe in the Word of God, believe in the Bible. I believe in all of the Bible. It's not just something that was for yesterday's time. It's for forever's time. God's Word is eternal. God is eternal. Do you think God not knew, would, doesn't know what's going to happen in the future? Does he not know that we're, things are going to be invented and created? Did God give us the Bible just for the years 0 AD to 1700 AD? No, there's no expiration date on the Bible, right? But many people say that, right? That was for that time, or that was for those people. I, today's different, right? God's word is eternal. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 7 says, Young people who obey the law are wise. Those with wild friends bring shame to their parents. Ooh. We have to look at who our friends are. Wild friends, stay away. Friends that want to cause trouble, friends that are foolish, stay away from them. Bring shame to our parents. Choose your friends wisely. Better to be alone than have foolish, bad friends. Wild friends always looking for trouble, looking to get messed up, can't control their mouths, have no self-control. We know them, right? We know them. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 6 says, Evil people are trapped by their sin, but the righteous escape shouting for joy. Right? Right. Hallelujah, I escaped that. We shout for joy when we escape our sin. Those friends that are still in it, they're stuck in it. So we're going to get away from them, okay? Get away from bad friends. Get away from the sins. Let go of them as fast as you can. 
with the help of God, one after another, all at once, whatever you can do or manage, let them go. Pray for the Lord. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 23 says, and <coughs> An angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sins. Stay away from angry people. Stay away from a hot-tempered person. You see them on the streets all the time, right? Someone that's just angry all the time. Someone that's hot-tempered. Hates all these people and go up to them and they're just all angry for no reason, right? They commit all kinds of sins. So, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 14 says, whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. Mm. Say you're not stealing, but you're partnering up with them. You still hate your own life. Don't be an accomplice. He swears to tell the truth, but reveals nothing. Don't partner with thieves. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 says, Fearing people is a dangerous trap. Elijah. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. Fear the Lord. Don't fear people. Because when you fear people, when you say, oh, he's not going to like me because I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm against abortion. That's foolish. He's not going to like me because I say that men should be with women and women should be with men. That's foolish. Trust the Lord. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord to speak for what's right. Fear the Lord to do what's right. Don't fear people because those people, when you try to be a people pleaser. When you're pleasing wicked people, that's going to pull you down in life. Fear the Lord. We, even if we're standing one with us and the Lord, don't acquiesce. Don't fear people. Fear the Lord. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. I don't care if I'm in a church and they're all into abortion and they put some nice name to it. I don't care if I'm in a church and they want to put the gay pride flag up to it and bow down to it symbolically or literally. Yes, the Bible says that homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. It says that a man is to be with a man and a woman is to be with a woman. And yet, I will boldly say that we are the most loving to that group of people because we will tell them that that is what the Bible says, first and foremost. And second, there is hope through faith in Jesus Christ because he will forgive you of your sins. And as Jesus casts out the demons, I believe that those things are a demonic influence. You can cast it out and renounce it in Jesus' name and be free. And that is the most loving, gracious thing that, that somebody that can hear that actually does it. And this ministry, Christ Forgiveness Ministry, has had more conversations with people in the LGBT group and community than probably maybe any other ministry that I personally know have. And there are countless testimonies of people that have been free, set free of that lifestyle and sin. But praise the Lord. So, you know, because you'll hear whether it's family or someone on the street, let them know. Let them know. Because anyone can clip out something and you know, slice it up and dice it up and say one way or another. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Praise the Lord. Put our trust in him. All we have to say is the word of God. And they come, they try to refute us, our beliefs, what we're doing. 
Give him the word of God. Let me look it up. Look it, or tell them to look it up, actually. Because if you got to look it up, they might give you, oh, you don't know it? Well, okay, well, there's a, you know, thousands of sentences in the Bible. I may not have every single one of them memorized. But don't, don't even give them reasons. Just take the responsibility yourself. Look it up. Right now, pull out your phone. Sometimes people need tough love. There's different kinds of love, but like a soft love doesn't work for everybody. And at different times and places, there's a different type of love that may be needed. Like, I need a tough love. I also appreciate a good, you know, soft love at different times. You know, there's time and place for that. Sometimes I need a tough love. And hardcore sin, I heard preachers say this, hardcore sinners need Sometimes a hardcore message to get through to them. And when everyone else has failed someone in the world, like the conventional trying, whether it's a teacher or like some world counseling session, like sometimes it's up to us to get through that person in the moment. It's like, what value can we find in each moment? When we're in anything really. And in particular, when we're on the street with someone, like a 30 second conversation with one of us can change someone's life. Give them the word of God. Use wisdom and understanding in the approach. Does the person need a tough love right now, a soft love, something in between? You know? And there's going to be criticism. There's a always going to be criticisms against the church. And when we're trying our best, there's always going to be, do, do I give the gospel of this order, the first in, first out, last in, last out, you know, it's like try your best. And if you need to train, then train. Oh, fact, we should always be trained. We should always be in the Bible. I mean, Pastor David, in the discipleship course, one of his best practices from it is read two chapters of the Bible in the morning and at night. Sometimes they can't do that. Sometimes it's got to be all at once, like at night, for example. Or sometimes my schedule is before I do something. But if we're constantly training, if we're always, if we're, you know, when Pastor Dear was out here, I asked him, I said, what is your advice for preparing for sermon? He said, you know, someone that's got a job, you know, what I recommend is 30 minutes Monday, 30 minutes Tuesday, 30 minutes Wednesday, and write out in your notebook, and then Thursday, Friday, meditate on it, practice it, if you go to the gym or you're going on a walk, meditate it on it, meditate on it. He said, for him, and he's constantly in the Word, he's constantly got sermons built up, and for what's appropriate for each person, and the congregation and the time and what's needed. And I think that's really something that this ministry does. This ministry is like, you know, Pastor David calls it like the Navy SEALs. It's like, it's not for everyone, but what we really do is we like raise up and train strong leaders in the faith. Like, this ministry is bold like lions. Like, like the big mega shit, they just don't do it for me. Like, yeah, it's okay every once in a while. Brother wants to go to the mega church, and they got the smoke show and the lasers, and they got the huge worship band. That's nice. Having a nice worship band is nice. But when it's like, you know, just like the soft message, and it's just you get one scripture, and the rest is just wings off the cuff or using your talent of speaking, I'm just like, okay, you know. I just, you know, I, 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 I need, I like the Navy SEAL training. I like bold as lions. I like, I need a good tough love. I appreciate all the loves, you know, but I need a good dose of scripture, personally. You know, I need something that actually sharp, sharpens the iron. Like a marshmallow doesn't sharpen the iron. <laughs> if someone's giving me, like, marshmallow sharpening, I'm just like, all right, I, you know. 
I need it. Oh, man, be strong. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Jesus. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield, it is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Uh, here we go. Proverbs chapter 31. Regarding the women. This is uh, a message from King uh, Lemuel in Proverbs. Not much is known about this king. I think he's believed to be a king of Israel at some point in time. I think this is the only reference to him. And uh, this is a proverb that his mother taught him that he wrote down. It says, do not waste your strength on women, on those who ruin kings. Women can ruin kings. So we got to be careful. we got to look for a virtuous woman. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 4 says, It is not for kings, this is continuing from King Lemuel, from what his mother taught him. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol. He goes on to say, Alcohol is for the dying. And wine for those in bitter distress. Let them drink to forget their poverty. And remember their troubles no more. Praise the Lord. Something like alcohol like takes out like 20% of the population each year, something like that. It's just a killer. You know, they call it spirits for a reason. Right? right. It's like people get blacked out, and what do they say? Like, I don't I don't remember anything. It's like it wasn't me. You know, it's like it's somebody completely different, right? They get all blacked out and like they're acting all wild and crazy, right? God knows what's happening. And then Proverbs really instructs us about the right type of wife. I want to go to Proverbs chapter 31, starting at verse 10. It says, this is really a framework for a godly woman, not only to look for, but also to do a Bible study. Like, say you're married, and like, just Constantly like renewing, refreshing, reiterating, training with each other. You know, it's just a few short verses, but what a what a difference it can make in any relationship, really. And we can do all sorts of training, whether we're planning on getting married to have biblical counseling, which this ministry does, which I believe is super impactful. I think has a hundred percent success rate in marriages, which is incredible in today's day and age, where I think. 60 plus percent of marriages end up in divorce. So if 60 something percent of marriages end up in divorce, shouldn't we not do what they're doing? Right? How about we actually do what the Bible says? So Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 says, who can find a virtuous woman? So that's the number one thing to look for, is a virtuous woman. For her price is above rubies. Rubies are a gem that's valuable. But if you can find a virtuous woman, that's more valuable than that. So that's the first to look for is a virtuous woman. Moving on. The heart of her husband doth safety trust in her. So it's the heart of the man that her safety trusts in. So that he shall... Have no need of spoil. I believe that means like you know, get another side girl, sort of thing. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. 
she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Wool is like a garment to keep you warm. So you want to keep your children warm. We live in a hot environment, but for most of the world, it was harsh winters, right? Flax, the literal word in the King James, if I'm not interpreting wrong, there's flax seed, which is a food. She worketh diligently, willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships, she bringeth her food from afar. It's good to have a wife that brings food for the children, right? It's like, it's crazy because we live in like this world that's so like, I mean, just to say it bluntly, we live in like a feminist world. It's like, especially in this country, it's like that and LGBT is the god of the government. And there's so much pressure on men to become women nowadays, and there's pressure on women to become men. The world is so messed up. Even if we're the last ones, even if we're the last ones, let's do it God's way, please. We've got to stop fearing the world and fearing other people. So I'm going to preach the Word of God. I'm going to preach what the Word of God says, what the Bible says. And I don't care if they disagree with me. They can take it up with God. And I think we know what the consequences of that <laughs> is going to be. So I'll take it God's way, and the others can do it the devil's way. And we'll see who wins in the end. I actually know who has a victory in the end, and it's God. It's God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Okay, moving on. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She makes food for the family early in the morning. She considereth a field and buyeth, buyeth it. She have, that's wisdom and knowledge to know a field. That's a plot of land, like a land. Okay? That's wisdom to buy it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted the vineyard. Praise the Lord. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivered, delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her, in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises, praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised, and give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own work praise her in the gates. Praise the Lord. Lord, 
Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord. We ask you to have mercy upon our land, Lord. The land and our people, Lord, are hurting, Lord. They're so confused, Lord God. We're a few, Lord, standing for the truth in today's day and age, Lord God. Wait. Lord, help us, Lord, reach our people, Lord, where we are, where you've entrusted us to be, Lord God. Grant us the courage, Lord, the wisdom, Lord. your ways to speak up for what is right, what is just, Lord, what is the truth, Lord. So speak and be in love, Lord God. Lord, we pray for our families, Lord. Pray for our men and our women, our boys and our girls, Lord God, that they be protected, Lord minds, their hearts, their souls be protected, Lord. Lord, I pray for hearing, healing upon everyone here under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, Lord, healing of their minds, healing of their hearts, healing of their souls, Lord. And be restored, Lord. Restore, Lord, their masculinity, Lord, to the men. Restore the femininity to the women, Lord God. Help us to raise men of God. Help us to raise women of God, Lord, that you intended them to be, Lord. Lord, we reject and renounce every word from the devil, Lord, demons, Lord, trying to influence us wrongly, Lord. Ask for help and healing for those afflicted by the devil, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We ask for your word to strengthen us, Lord, and heal us today, Lord. Grant us courage, Lord, to speak the truth and instruct others, Lord. There's so many instructing people the wrong way, Lord God. Our enemies are so many, Lord. And we know that we have you, Lord. We ask for your armor of God upon us. Lord, we know you'll continue to open up the right doors. You know you've blessed us with the right jobs, Lord. For us to learn or contribute or impact in some way, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. skin, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for his family, Lord, as we bless him. May your labor be done. Bless the labor of his hands, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray with my brother Nathan here today.
Jesus, I pray, oh, my brother, that you come, Lord God, and speak to us and protect us, Lord. Bless us, my Lord Jesus. Grant him steadfastness, Lord God, that he may not waver, Lord God. Grant him wisdom, Lord. Great choice and action, Lord God. Grant him discernment, Lord. Grant him discernment, Lord. To know what is true, what is right from wrong, Lord God. Give him strength in everything, Lord. Strength in his family, Lord God. Give him the right words. Give him the knowledge when to speak, when not to speak, Lord God. A peaceful tongue, Lord. Guide him, Lord Jesus. Help him. Help him help help others. Help him help his family, Lord God. Help him bring reconciliation, Lord God. Give him the light. We thank you, Lord, for this, what you're doing in this young man, Lord God. We acknowledge you him here today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for having him read the Bible and be on the streets, Lord God. And in trouble, Lord God. Lord, we ask you to bless him with a sound mind and claim that promise of the soundness of mind through faith in you, Lord God. Renounce any delusions, Lord, to the devil, Lord God. Thank you for saving his life, Lord. We know he could be anywhere, Lord. He could be drunk and drugged on the streets. He could be stabbed. He could be in jail, Lord, but be using him for the kingdom, Lord. Lord, I want to acknowledge him as we hear today, Lord. Lord, we ask for a grant of deeper intimacy with you, Lord God. Righteously, virtuously, Lord. Lord, we ask you to help him to look Himself as you see him, as your child, Lord, as an anointed one, as a saint of God. We renounce any cloudiness of the mind, Lord God. Lord, help him remember his blessings, Lord God. To be a good steward of them, Lord. Bless him with his own health, Lord God. His able body, Lord God. His talents, Lord. The ministry, Lord. This new job, Lord. Ask him to bless the work in this new job, whatever it is, Lord. Want him to meet, Lord, to contribute, Lord, to learn. Thank you, Lord. Bless his prayer time, Lord. Bless his Nana, Lord, his uncle, Lord. He may not understand what he's doing, Lord, but we know what he's doing. But he's doing it for you, Lord God. Jesus. God, continue to use him for the kingdom, Lord. Thank you for his talents, his gifts, Lord. His gift of preaching, Lord. His evangelism, Lord. His heart to save souls, Lord God. His heart to pastor others, to counsel others. Lord God, his heart to provide for his family, Lord God. His heart for the churches, Lord. Ministries, Lord. The body of Christ, Lord God. I ask you to bless this leadership his wife, Lord, that you will continue to lead her, instruct her, counsel her, help her bring reconciliation anywhere that's needed with his family and others. Lord God, for your hand to be upon him and his children, Lord, will continue to help raise up his children in your ways, Lord God, protect his children, protect their innocence, protect their minds. 
into other ministries here in the valley and around the world, the country, Lord God. Bless our hearts, Lord God, and protect our hearts, Lord. Lord, I ask you to break every curse upon us, Lord, that your blood was shed on the cross for us, Lord. I ask you to cast out all demons from us in Jesus' name. All demons must go. One, two, three, all demons must depart and go. As we repose in your Holy Spirit, Lord God, bring your blood over us, Lord. Spirit of our God upon us, Lord God. Cover us from each week, Lord. Each day, Lord. We have the Holy Spirit. Lord, open the window of heaven for us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, walk with us to talk with us and, live, and help us to live a fruitful life in you, Father God. 